Hello everybody, I'm Phantom. Almost a year ago to this day, I went blind. And I've made a lot of videos talking about my last year, over the last year, about medical things. And I know I kind of beat it to death. But I feel like talking about it because I want to raise awareness for it. Until my diagnosis, I knew jack shit about multiple sclerosis. And it's been a extremely wild year. Around this time last year, like maybe a week before now last year, I woke up and I couldn't see very well. I just thought I was having a severe migraine. That's all I thought it was. It That's what it felt like. It's the spots that you get when you have migraines. I remember talking to my boss, letting him know that I, I can't see anything. I worked the days that I was scheduled uh, because I I'm devoted to my place of work. If I'm going to be paid to work there, I might as well do the best that I can. But after the 4th of July, I was ready to go see a doctor. Uh, the day after the 4th of July, they were closed still, so I had to wait before I could go into the, the walk-in clinic. So the day after the day after the 4th of July, I went into the walk-in clinic, and the lady was, you know, putting her fingers in all different places, like in my peripheral vision, and then in the central vision, how many fingers am I holding up? I'm like, I can see in my peripheral fine, but if I were to look at you, I can't see your face. And she scared the shit out of me because she said that she thought my retina was detached <laughs> and was going to like fully detach. So she like sent me miles away to another town to uh, see an optologist like immediately same day. And it was like 3 p.m. So like I had to fucking get there fast before they locked the doors on me. Throughout the whole day, they did a hundred million tests. I think I went into every single room in the optology office. The, the entire building. They checked the pressure of my eyes, they they checked my peripherals, they checked my focus, uh, they, they gauged everything. For those of you who don't know, pre this problem, I had better than quote unquote perfect vision. People say 2020 is perfect vision, it is not. People can have much better vision than 2020. Uh, I'm trying to remember what I had. I think I had 2010. It was 2010 or 2015 vision. Like, I had better than 20-20 vision. So having vision problems is something I've, I've never had to deal with my entire life. Uh, after all the testing, I remember the optologist came up to me and she said that the good news is uh, the machines did their job and they were able to accurately map my blind spots. But the negative is they were symmetrical. And if any of you know anything about that, anytime vision problems are symmetrical in both eyes, it's not your eyes, it's your brain. Immediately, they were worried it could be a tumor, it could be anything, they had no idea. So they started doing tests, uh, they got me in contact with a neurologist. Sadly, in the state that I live in, there are very few uh, uh, neurologists. So I actually had to go to another state just to see somebody. I went over there and they did a whole slew of tests. They hospitalized me. I guess before that they did MRIs and they saw that it obviously wasn't a tumor, but I had bleeds in my brain. There were lesions, noticeable spots uh, where damage had been done and there were a lot of them. And one very prominent and fresh one was on my optic nerve. So I went to the neurologist and I was admitted to the hospital. Anytime you have uh, lesions and stuff like that, the usual fix is they dose you up, like max dose of steroids. And the whole idea is if they blast you with enough steroids fast enough, uh, your body can heal all the damage that was done. At the same time, they did a lumbar uh, puncture, a spinal tap. They took a ass load of fluid out of my spine and they shipped it off and kept some and they, they did a whole bunch of tests with it. Uh, I had a very bad reaction to it and I had pretty severe headaches. Now, I also at the time was suffering from ulcers and if anybody else has suffered from ulcers, you would probably know you cannot be on steroids unmonitored if you have ulcers because you can bleed into your stomach. So. I had to be kept at the hospital 
while they were doing the steroids. They did them for five days. I wasn't able to get up or move around because of the spinal tap. And when you get headaches from lumbar punctures, what they do is they overload you with caffeine. And they were bringing in like large sacks of caffeine and were IVing it into me. And while they were giving me shitloads of caffeine, they were also absolutely blasting my body full of uh, saline so that I wouldn't dry up like a raisin. So I was confined to my bed. I couldn't move. I had thousands of cups of coffee's worth of caffeine and a shitload of steroids in me. I felt like I could jump off walls. I didn't sleep for five days. Like I, I would nod off for maybe 20 minutes. That would be it. I wouldn't be able to sleep anymore because of how ludicrously overloaded I was of medication. I, I was discharged. I went home. Uh, if you were to go back to, I think, August, September of last year on my channel, you would see that I was doing videos laying on the floor because if I were to sit up, my head would hurt because of the lumbar puncture. It took weeks for my headache to go away. Uh, my vision did not immediately improve. It took a long time, but while I was waiting for my vision to improve, the results of the lumbar puncture came in and I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Now, for those of you who don't know what multiple sclerosis is, it is a disorder or disease. I, I hear people call it both. It is where your immune system attacks your own brain and your white blood cells will strip the fatty sheath off of um, nerves in your brain. And when your nerves no longer have that insulation, they can't send information. And sometimes even the stripped nerves will hurt while trying to send information. So whenever I would look at any degree of light, I would get a, a very heavy and severe headache. And it, it's a problem that still hasn't gone away. There is no cure for multiple sclerosis, but it is manageable to a degree. Uh, with my diagnosis, I will almost guaranteed uh, be crippled in multiple ways throughout my life. It is a very volatile uh, condition and it kind of acts randomly. And what happens is impossible to predict but a very common thing is people who develop it, they eventually will lose feeling in parts of their body. It can be prompted to come back through steroids, but it's practically a guarantee that I will one day be in a wheelchair or will lose sensation in my hands and feet. I could lose taste, sight, smell, hearing, feeling, any function. I can lose. But thankfully, um, medicine has progressed pretty far. And there is medication that people like me can take to uh, limit the effects of the disorder. However, it comes at a pretty heavy cost. Obviously, I want to keep my legs and my arms and my senses. So the medication I'm on, it removes my immune system almost entirely. There are a lot of different medication that you can take to do so. Um, the medication I ultimately chose is a pill that I take once every day. It effectively results in me having a white blood count of virtually zero. Now, I'm not worried about suddenly waking up tomorrow and, and not being able to walk, obviously. It can still happen even with a suppressed immune system but it's less of a threat. However, like I said, I have no white blood cells and that opens up a completely different bag of problems. When you don't have any white blood cells, obviously you have to be worried about things like getting sick that definitely exists. However, um, if I were to get sick and this is the reason I picked the medication I did, I can just stop taking the pills. And then if I stop taking the pills, my white blood cells will be released from my lymph nodes and I will be able to act. I will be able to fight whatever illness I have and hopefully the illness will be taken care of 
and I will be back on the medication before my white blood cells can harm me. But uh, illness isn't really the biggest problem. When you don't have any white blood cells, your biggest threat is cancer. Everybody is constantly producing cancer cells, but our immune system almost all the time is able to find that and destroy it. And I'm no different, but I don't have an immune system to fight it. As such, I have to be very careful about things like smoking, even secondhand smoke, I cannot do. Uh, my biggest threat is skin cancer, by far. Um, as such, I can't be in the sun. If I were to spend longer than five minutes in direct sunlight, my chances of an early death from cancer is incredibly high. There are things I can do about it, obviously, and they are things that I do about it. Uh, sunscreen is one thing that people can do, but what I talk to my doctors about and what I do is I am covered head to toe at all times. I, I can actually show you a picture. I don't mean to break the Im immersion. Uh, however, I wouldn't exactly call this a face reveal. I have UV resistant underclothes. I have long UV resistant shirts. I have UV resistant gloves, UV resistant balaclava. I have a UV reflective face shield that also functions as sunglasses for my light sensitivity. While my vision has almost come completely ba back, I have quote unquote perfect vision now, so 2020. Nothing to complain about, but it is less than what I had before. And the light sensitivity, it never improved and it never will. Anything that would heal or can heal has healed. I'm not blind anymore and I don't have to worry about being a cripple, but I look like this. I'm sure people have experienced situations where they're looked at funny, but there is nowhere I can go where people don't stare and point and ask. No matter where I go, I, I scare children. I scare grown ass men <laughs> at work. I'll come around a corner and people will jump. Kids will cry. It's it's not easy. In the words of my doctor, and I agree with this completely, is I would rather have people stare at me than wake up without my legs. It's made even worse. <laughs> it, it was actually fine at first. Everybody was wearing masks. I, I really didn't stick out much, but nobody wears them anymore. In truth, it's... It's not the remarks or the looks that bother me. I couldn't care less what random people on the street think. It's not having a say in it. By all means, I technically, quote unquote, have a choice. But I don't see do this or you're going to be in a wheelchair as choice. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemies. Before everything, I, I relaxed. I could sleep when I was tired, go outside when I needed air. Now I have to dress up like I'm going into an irradiated site just to step outside. I'm medically limited to when and how much I can work. Before I went blind, I was on the path to having my own place. I had thousands of dollars saved up. I, I had prospects. I had options. And I lost them all. Now I live with family. Because I can't afford my own place. I can't work enough to afford my own place. If you're in the same boat as I am, you're not alone. And just because it's hard doesn't mean it's not worth living. And if you know somebody who is in the same boat as me, let them know that they're not alone. 
because it's scary. <laughs> so thank you all for the support that you give me. It doesn't seem like much to you, but to me, it's, it's everything. Having something to look forward to is priceless. I'm gonna end this recording and go work on some stuff. So thank you for your time, truly, and have a good rest of your day. Goodbye.